As a trophy hunter, it's always fun to try and get the platinum in all of the games that I play. And when I finally unlock it, it's always a huge sigh of relief that I've finally beaten that game. But I'm always left wishing that I knew all of the stuff that I'd learnt when going for the platinum at the beginning of my journey because it could then help me to determine whether I should go for the platinum in this game or not. Maybe there's too many annoying trophies, annoying collectibles, hard bosses or just loads of bullshit bits in it that just make you hate the game by the end of the platinum journey. Those are things that I would really like to know beforehand. So in today's episode of Should You Platinum, I'm going to share my experience of my platinum journey journey in this game to let you know whether you should play it, plat it or just downright avoid it. There are 36 trophies in total, 4 gold, 9 silver, 22 bronze and 1 platinum and it only took me 9 hours to complete it and platinum it so it is quite a short game. So let's discuss now the trophy types that we can go for in this game. So first up are the story progression trophies. So these are the ones that you just automatically unlock when playing through the game, as the game tends to give you a bronze trophy for pretty much every chapter that you complete. So in total, there are 16 chapters in the game, and they're all at sort of varying lengths. Some of them are a little bit shorter than others, but for the most part, you're probably looking at around half an hour to an hour of playtime in order to finish any given chapter and this game is actually really fun it's a third person sort of co-op sort of stealth um, up, but it's not a two-player game it's a single player game and you have a companion with you for the most part whether it's your brother or one of the other npc characters and you have to just work with them to get through the level avoiding the guards solving various puzzles and doing a little bit of light platforming and it is an enjoyable experience but what i would say about it is there are a lot of sections that are quite slow where you're just sort of walking and their characters are just talking to each other. So this is a game that while you'll enjoy it in the first playthrough, any repeated playthroughs to get other trophies that you might have missed will become a bit of a slug due to these slow sections. So I would advise you to try and do all of it in a single playthrough. That way you'll still enjoy the game and not get these boring playthroughs where you're just stuck in these slow plodding sections. For the most part, the game's fairly easy too. There's no difficulty related trophies and none of it should give you too much trouble because even if you die on some of the stealth sections, it's just a case of trial and error learning the patterns and just how best to avoid them. The combat can be a little bit tricky. There's like one boss fight at the start of the game that gave me more trouble than the final boss. But other than that, it's not really that hard. So once you complete all 16 chapters, you'll find that some of them might be a silver trophy. You'll then get a gold trophy called Knights for completing all of the chapters. Um, so I'm not going to say why that's a trophy in itself, but if you complete the game, you'll see why. So yeah, overall difficulty rating for the campaign is probably at about a 4 or 5 out of 10 because there's not really much that will get you stuck for too long and it is an enjoyable experience. But make sure you use a guide for the collectibles and the missable trophies so that you can do it all in one playthrough. Speaking of collectibles, there are a bunch of trophies tied to collectibles in this game as there are various different collectibles that you can find along the way. One of these is the curiosities that you can find in sort of like hidden sort of sections yep. of the levels, these off the beat paths we'll that you might have to climb up to or break a lock on one side Not to go through you. a gate on the other or just go on a branching path to find the things and these are like little sort of like gifts that you'll find so here you can see me finding the wow. horseshoe and once you find all of you these you'll end up getting the trophy for all luck. of them but I think the silver one was just for finding half of them Likewise, there's another trophy for finding half of the plants in the game called Herbalist. So these are the uh, plants that your brother Hugo will often run to and find and then you can press the button to pick them up. Lavender. But there are also ones in levels where you're not with your brother, so you do oh, need to keep an eye brother. out for these. He you'll know you've got it because hair. Anicia will the put grass. them in her hair or she'll talk about it. And once you get half of the amount that you What's need that to ground? find, you'll get that trophy. One of the good things about the collectibles in this game is that there are lots of trackers for you to keep a, a tab on how many you've got and what you've missed. 
when you're on the level select screen it will tell you all the chapters and break down all the collectibles um, for each chapter and all the various types so you can easily see which chapters you're missing collectibles in and if you were to pause the game and go into the options menu you would see that there's a breakdown of all your collectibles in sort of order so you can easily keep track of all the ones that you've got and easily go back and use a guide if you didn't in order to get the rest of them so there's a bronze trophy called resource sharing which requires you to find a bunch of these uh, wagons that you can go into and they usually offer a load of crafting uh, materials and a workbench i think there's a bunch of these on some of the later levels maybe about five i can't quite remember so you need to keep an eye out for them they're usually off the beaten path you can get a gold trophy for um, collecting all of the plants, and that's the botanist trophy, and that'll just unlock as soon as you pick up the final plant. Um, another good thing about the clickboards is it saves it as soon as you get it, I believe, so you can pick it up, um, and as soon as it's saved, you can then just quit out of that level, so you haven't got to go through uh, a long bunch of the level. As soon as you've got it, it's just immediately saved. Uh, so that's a, a really good thing about the collectibles in this game. Uh, you'll also get a gold trophy for getting all of the curiosities. Um, so once you find your last one, you'll get the trophy for that too. So again, it's just a bunch of collectibles. Um, you get silver for getting half of them and then like a gold for getting all of them. And they can show up on the areas because everything that you can pick up sort of glimmers uh, and you'll get like an icon telling you to pick it up when you get close to it anyway. So they shouldn't be too hard to find but you definitely want to use it guys just in case you miss some. So speaking of missable things, there are a bunch of missable trophies that are tied to certain events that you can do within some of the levels of the game. The first one you'll see is in one of the first chapters where you get to do this sort of target practice mini game. So here you just need to use your slingshot to smash all the pots. Now here you'll see that when I smash this third pot here, it smashes the second to last pot as well. But thankfully after smashing the final pot, I still got the trophy. So these are just ones that you definitely want to have a guide at hand so you can see which chapters contain these missable trophies in to save you replaying an entire chapter to get it. This one here, when you find this um, door with the, red, the yellow, uh, yellow white cross painted on it, uh, if you walk down this alleyway, there's a tree here and Hugo, your little brother, will tell you that he's hungry and you get the option to just press triangle to pick up an apple and give it to him. But if you just ignored it and walked past or carried on down the street, you could easily miss this trophy. So it's definitely one that you want to keep an eye out for all of these collectible trophies. You're just better off having a guide. At this point in the game, we get to this field. Hugo will run to the left and have a game of hide and seek with you. So you want to make sure that you go to the left. Stick to the far left path like you can see I'm doing here. And eventually, if you look down uh, the rows of plants, you will see him... Uh, sort of crouched and hiding on the edge of the main path. So you just got to creep up behind him and tell him that you found him to get the trophy. Whatever you do, don't go right because obviously he would see you because he's looking down that way. So you need to make sure you go left there. The Silver Saviour trophy requires you to save the man at the end of this tunnel here that's got a load of rats between him and you. So the idea is to put your torch in the holder so you don't die and then use your ignite. Uh, Ignifer sort of ability in the um, sling to fire down the corridor to hit that light source because that will keep him from getting killed by the rats. Unfortunately I didn't do it properly here and I did die but I still got the trophy. So in this, this section of the game you can go all the way down the stairs instead of going into oh, Hugo uh, Lucas's lab, sorry. And here is a grave, and it's where we unlock the bronze tribute trophy. And when I read the description for this, I thought maybe it was going to be a bit of an Easter egg trophy, a reference to a past game by this studio. But when I got there, I was a little bit disappointed by it because it didn't seem to be anything. It was just someone's grave in the game. In this chapter here, where we had to get into this building, you can get a silver trophy hard way by taking out the guards that are standing in front of the door. There is an option to sneak around in one of the side doors, but you need to go through the main door in order to get this trophy. Killing them isn't too hard, but they are one of those enemies that have like the armor on, so you need to make sure you're using all of your abilities in order to take them out, or you could just lure them back to the rats that are not far away. But once you go through the main door, you'll instantly unlock the silver out of the way trophy. 
There is another silver trophy you can earn called Merciful on one of the later levels where you'll often find that there are a bunch of guards that are sort of trapped by rats. Now you can send the rats to them to kill them so you can get past it easily, but you're better off just using the Ignifer on some of the light sources to guide the rats away from the enemies and also clear the path for you. So just make sure you do that. I think there's two uh, guards that you have to sort of save in this level to... Captain Psychic Trophy was the one that I thought About gave time. me the most trouble. Once I realised that I had to play this chapter as Hugo, the girl's brother, who for the most part is a defenceless little boy throughout most of the game, and this chapter was no different as he's very easy to get spotted and an instant game over. So this missable trophy requires you to follow this tall guard to a room, but actually get there before he does. So it's basically a sort of mission where you have to trail him as he walks through the castle, but at some point get ahead of him. It's quite funny what he says to this guard. But do not lower your guard. Because just seconds later, as he moves out the way so the other one can walk through that corridor, he basically instantly, pretty laughably, lowers his guard and I can just crawl right past him without him really noticing. <laughs> what a fail. But thank god their security is very lax because this kid wouldn't be able to do anything against them. So we follow him to an outside courtyard bit and it's here where you need to get ahead of him. So I just sprinted up the left hand side but there was also a collectible here in between these hedges so I had to go around and get it but this would mean that he would get ahead of me and beat me into the room but thankfully the stars aligned and when I was grabbing this collectible he was just walking past me the other side of the hedge and after you grab it the boy instantly stands up and then as I turned and ran back out to try and catch up with him he actually sort of spotted me and went to investigate so that allowed me to actually get ahead of him so if I wasn't going for the collectible at this point and just playing through naturally he would have beat me into this next room and probably would have been ahead of me before we got into the room after it where the trophy would pop so at this point I'm just thinking okay I'm ahead of him now let's just see what's in here because it looked like he was going this way so I walk into this hallway and we have a door at the far end but there is also a staircase on the left and at this point I don't know where to go and I'm kind of tempted to go up the stairs because I'm thinking he's got to go up to talk to the woman because we're after the mum at that point but for some reason I just decided no I'll go straight ahead into this open doorway and see what's in here and as soon as I went in I unlocked the captain's sidekick trophy without me really even realising what I was doing. So at that point I was in a bit of a shock and I could see him coming towards me. So I decided to hide under this table and as I was slowly waiting for him I tried to figure maybe I could get a bit further ahead because I wasn't too sure if that was the right trophy or not. And as I came out the other side of the table I was instantly spotted and then the checkpoint puts me in the corridor just before the door but this time the guard that I'm tailing is actually already in front of me. So I just try and walk up and sneak up behind him. But as we get to the door, he just slams it in my face. So I can't even get in there anymore. But thankfully, that was the trophy for getting there. And that near the end of the game, before you have to push the wagon to avoid all the archers, there is a side path that you can take by shooting out a lock on a gate for a fence. This will then lead you... Uh, down this path where you'll get this short little cutscene that will give you the trophy we'll for your together. troubles. This and is we'll another easily another missable one that you fight might not me. go to, so just be aware of it. There is a blacksmith trophy here that you can get. And that's pretty much it for all of the missable trophies. Now we move on to the upgrade and crafting specific ones. <laughs> So one of the first trophies you might get is the Bronze Alchemist Trophy for crafting. I think it's about 50 um, weapon ammo types. And this is one that I thought would be a bit of a grind that I would have to do afterwards. Because I was trying to conserve my materials so I could do the upgrades. But I naturally just got it as I was playing. And this is the section of the level where you can get that trophy for going through the front door the hard way. So this is just one that you'll probably just get as you're playing through and just crafting the weapons to get past the various sections. Anyway, one of the bigger trophies that you're going for is the upgrades because you need to fully upgrade the sling for the silver trophy as well as fully upgrade the equipment. So you do this by picking up all the materials. It's very much a crafting game. So you've got to search every area you're in to find all the materials because you need a lot of the materials to upgrade each section. 
So the sling has six upgrade points that you need to slot into it. And once I've done that, I got the silver trophy for that, but I still need to do the equipment. So I actually backed up my save to the cloud beforehand. And once I'd done that, I quit out, reloaded that save to then spend those last few points that I had on the equipment. And it was here where I realized that I could upgrade the last two bits of the equipment. But I thought I would still have to do the other set. But to my surprise, I actually unlocked the silver trophy for fully upgrading all of the equipment. So this was kind of a little bit bullshit to be honest because I wasn't expecting this because there is actually a third set, Alchemy, and I just figured that was tied into the equipment bit because I didn't really notice the headers at the first. So I was actually going through the game upgrading the Alchemy as well as I went along if I couldn't afford the, the last bit of the equipment. So make sure when you're going for this that you don't really spend many points on Alchemy, concentrate on equipment and sling, go for the increased pocket size first because that will allow you to... Um, carry more materials but yeah that's pretty much all of the trophies that I've covered here so now let's give it a final rating so I think you should definitely plat Plague Tale Innocence it's a really fun game but just make sure you do it in one playthrough using a guide to find all of the collectibles and all of those missable trophies because otherwise it might get a bit annoying having to play through it and deal with all of those slow story based sections in some of the chapters but yeah Platinum this game, it's well worth your time. Awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.